Hello, my name is Chris Kurzik, and I'm the Principal Engineer at Athabasca Engineering Solutions, AES for short. And uh, what does AES do? Well, first of all, we provide third-party value evaluations. We provide training and certification. We provide equipment re-rating. A little bit more about third-party value evaluations. Are you concerned about the value you are receiving from your engineering designs? Are you concerned about safety issues or getting the best equipment for the service? AES provides an independent third-party value-added reviews of static and rotating equipment. A bit more detail about training and certification. AES provides training and certificate certification for workers. Did you know that 60% of workers claim that training and development is the most important policy for a company, so the, uh, for their careers? A training program with certification is available online and instruction is provided by highly skilled, experienced engineers. If there's any specific topic you wish to be reviewed, please contact us at AES. Equipment re-rating. Operators are constantly looking for ways to improve efficiency and reduced costs. This may require changes in flow rates, for example, or, or, or changes in pressure. Equipment upgrades may be required for more efficient modern technology. AES provides management of change methodology in conformance to API and CSA. We work closely with industry standards and equipment manufacturers to get great results. In this presentation, we're going to talk about API 650 tanks. It's an overview. First of all, we're going to start with the design summary, the, the, the constraints within design, the applications, a bit about the annex of 650 and the interesting parts, materials, design procedures. Let's review where we are in the tank, API tank standards. We first started talking about the 12 series of tanks, which included bolted tanks all the way to FRP tanks. Last presentation, we talked about 620, and the last piece is 650 tanks. Now here's a summary about the API 650 tank standard. Unlike uh, at least the 12 series of tanks, there's no specific capacity. Um, this is by design. There's a lot more engineering in API 650 and 620. The configuration is always vertical, cylindrical, above ground, and it can be closed or open topped construction. Even though we see a lot less open top construction than before. But we still see it uh, with if there's a, a internal floating roof. Internal pressure, two and a half uh, psig or 17.2 kpg max with an annex F. External pressure uh, shown there. And but if you invoke H uh, annexes H and V, you can um, extend that. And the temperature is low temp, but it's not. Um, extremely, except if you use annexes A, L, and M. About API 650 storage tanks. They're designed for large storage tanks. So they're, you, these are, are some of the largest storage tanks that you will, you will find. Oil and gas, chemical, water surface, everything that applies to uh, within the API scope non-refrigerated service. If you require refrigerated service, then consider at the API 620. Field and shop fabrication procedures are included in API 650. 
inspection and testing examination procedures are included in it. Now about the annex. Annex C and H are for external and internal floating roofs. Annex E is for seismic design. Last presentation we talked about how that's pretty much the American system and so there's different systems around the world so there would be some interpretation and decisions involved with that. Another th interesting thing is uh, Annex G which is for domed roofs which are primarily the aluminum ones. Annex I that's the under tank leak detection and subgrade protection systems. Also very important to meet the, the local jurisdiction environmental guidelines. Now materials plays a big part of the API 650 spec. To begin with, we'll talk about plate. There's a very wide selection of materials in addition to ASTM in the last couple decades they've included CSA, ISO, and EN materials and this is the same as what you'd find with um, API 620 tanks. The plate materials and thicknesses are based on um, the MDMT which is a minimum design temperature so if you require low temperature materials you have to make sure you meet your, your thickness and, uh, and otherwise you need additional impact requirements. Now the, the API 650 has a number of material classes in a material chart and they're broken out by Roman numerals and there are several, several groups. There are alloy restrictions just like uh, API 620 and there are also manufacturing restrictions which are similar to API 620. More about the materials of, of construction. Pipe flanges, forgings and, and castings follow the ASTM specifications. ASTM specifications has standard temperature materials and low temperature materials. AS and this is, has to do with the, the minimum design metal temperature. Structural, they have specific specifications that are permitted, a short list basically, just like API 620. The annexes in API 650 have very specific material requirements for, for specific materials. I want to bring to highlight of some of these materials. Annex AL is for aluminum specific requirements. Annex S, austenitic and stainless steel. Annex, Annex SC, stainless steel, carbon steel combination. And this is all very similar. And Annex X, very similar in layout to API 620. Into the API 650 steel storage tank design procedures. There are specific procedures for joints and the special considerations, which is like load combinations, bottom plates, the design, annular bottom plates, shell design, and these are all design procedures. Note an interesting thing about the floors that there's a minimum requirement for floor thickness no matter what you do. And there's also a minimum shell thickness requirement. A little bit more. Shell openings, shell attachments to the tank have those procedures. Top and intermittent stiffening rings have procedures. The roof. The wind loads on tanks, the overturning stability calculation is very specific and it, it takes into account, you know, the wind pressure, of course, the weight of the tank, the pressure inside the tank and all these factors um, determine that. And this is very, was probably developed down in the deep in the United States where, where there's hurricane issues. And about tank anchorage, which you know falls in line with wind stability.
and yeah, like wind loads. Fluid internal pressure, hydrostatic loads, wind and internal pressure, wind and external pressure. Now the load combinations, gravity loads, dead loads, seismic. Gravity loads, dead loads, fixed roofs with suspended floating roofs. So once again, there's uh, we ha if we, we have floating roof, then we ha and we support it from the roof, then there's specific procedures on that design. There are three types of groupings for allowable stresses. There's allowable stress based on the product plate, basically design stresses, and that applies to the floor, the annular, and the shell. And then we have another component called hydrostatic stresses, which is based on the hydrostatic design stress, and that's primarily for the shell. We also have procedures for allowable well joint efficiency. So we can, so there's, there's very specific weld configurations in API 650. And there are also stress risers um, associated with each type of well joint efficiency. So they use these factors to take into account the stress concentration that can occur at, at well joints. Six hundred and fifty also takes into account traditional shell design methods that were originally done and added new techniques. So there's actually, when you read it, there's actually three types of uh, shell design methods. There's the one foot method, simplified for design, which is only for Annex A. So that only applies the one foot method. Not many people know that for uh, let tanks less than 200 feet in diameter. And there's also the variable design point method, which takes into account larger tanks or, or whatever you need for. And then there's the more com most complex, more, one of the more newer methods called the elastic design method. I hope that you found this presentation useful and valuable to you. This was provided by Athabasca Engineering Solutions. We'd love to hear your feedback and, and your thoughts on further videos. And we'd love to hear from you. Maybe we can do some business. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Take care for now.